All right, can I be frank? There is a lot of bad information out on the internet. You know, guys sound like they know what they're talking about, but really, truly, they're on forums and Facebook pages and sometimes even in person, and they don't really have any true knowledge to back it up. Here on Engine Room TV, we're going to fix that. The goal of this show is to arm you with the information that you need so that you can build a great engine of your own. And we're going to do that by teaming up with some of the best engine builders in the business. Now, in this series, we're hooked up with the guys at Prestige Motorsports, and they're putting together a 427 cubic inch engine, a Ford V8 with nitrous that's going to make a thousand horsepower. Hey, do I have your attention? Now, the best part is when it's all said and done, you can click on over to holly.com slash win and get registered to take this engine home for free. It's almost a $21,000 value. Now, with that said, let's get ourselves rolling and welcome to Engine Room TV. How did you get into running an, an engine business? I guess just love for horsepower, you know, and uh, it doesn't really matter if it's a Chevrolet or a small block Ford or even a Hemi. Uh, as long as it makes power, we're, we're happy to build them. Well, the one that you're working on right now is a pretty interesting project. Uh, tell me about that because you've teamed up with Holly and you're actually going to give this engine away? Yeah, so we've done quite a few of those with them over the last year or so, and uh, different variations. Uh, of course, this one being a small block Ford, uh, but we've done uh, some Gen 3 Hemis, LS. Um, uh, excellent opportunity for somebody to win a, a killer engine package. Uh, so what we kind of do is team up with some various companies and uh, working with Holly uh, to, to promote it and, you know, just uh, somebody, one lucky winner. So... Uh, this one, like I said, small block Ford, and uh, we're, our target's 1,000 horsepower. So it's a pretty, you know, we can talk about a little bit of what makes it a nitrous motor, but it, it's a pretty conventional piece as far as cubic inch and, and design, um, you know, so say 600 base horsepower and then uh, three to 400 shot of nitrous on top of that to, to hit the 1,000 mark. Well, let's talk about that then, because there are things that you're going to do to build this engine and to make it reliable that would be different as if you were building what, a, a turbo or a supercharged engine, right? Can you kind of walk us through some of the basics on that? Well, so, you know, if it's a, a nitrous motor, typically, you know, a guy's going to either be a pump gas deal or it's a high compression race gas deal. So normally that, that's what's going to be different. If you're building it for a blower or a turbo, it's typically going to be a lower compression engine. So uh, but if we dive into kind of some of the details, I think there's a little misconception uh, sometimes with customers. They think, you know, it's got a forged piston in it. So I should be okay with putting boost on it or nitrous. So for instance, with boost, if we've got a pump gas compression ratio, somewhere 10 and a half to one, we certainly really don't want to put boost on that depending on the fuel we're running. Um, on the flip side, you know, the nitrous motor, um, obviously one would feel comfortable at 10 and a half to one compression. It's got forged pistons, so I should be able to spray it. But I think what people need to understand is that there's several different types of forging. So you have a 4032 style forging and a 2618. And really what that is is the material makeup of the piston. So which one's better than the other? What are you going to be using in, in this build? In this particular build, it's going to use a 2618. Um, so it, it's a very stout piston to take that ex extreme temperature, cylinder pressure, um, so working with DSS, um, we really, really like their product line and their piston uh, is what they call an FX3. So uh, a few of the nice design features in this, it is a 2618, uh, but it also uses a heavy wall pin. So the, the piston pin is a 200 wall. So the thickness of this is, is much greater than something we'd use in a, a pump gas engine uh, or something we're not spraying. Uh, on top of that, you know, this has got what they call a lateral gas port. So that allows combustion pressure to get behind the ring and push it out against the cylinder for a better cylinder seal. 
cylinder seal. So those are just a couple of the basic features. So, uh, you know, if we were building an engine and it's got what we call 4032 forging, typically we're not going to recommend spraying it, even though it's a, a forged piston, it's just not quite as robust. So I'm not the world's smartest engine guy, all right? My nitrous experience is with my, my brother had, uh, had an old Fox body years ago. Mm -hmm. And when he had his, of course, you know, his was built as a street racer. So, you know, they, they hid the bottle underneath the, the rear seat. It was hidden back there. And he had the fogger button was on the upper right. The horn button was turned into the, the button for it. These days, I know that a lot of things are, are operated off of throttle controls. Is there a benefit one or the other? What are you going to do with, like, when somebody wins this engine? What are you going to recommend that, that they, how, how should they put it together so that it activates? So they can choose several different ways to activate it. But what we're going to actually do using the Holly EFI system, we're going to control it all through the EFI system. Uh, so basically, it's, it has a throttle position sensor because it is fuel injected. So we can do it several ways based on RPM or throttle position. And then we can even go as far as to selecting an RPM range that we want that uh, nitrous to run. So it could be say from 4,000 to 6,000, um, but down at 2,500, it, it wouldn't be activated. So there's, there's lots of ways to do that, uh, but primarily we'll probably do it off of a uh, throttle position. So there's a sweet spot in the RPM range where nitrous works best? Not necessarily. That's kind of a, a something that you're going to do as far as tuning to what the car can handle. So, you know, this is going to be more or less a street motor, but granted, a guy could use it at the racetrack. Uh, so you might like, for instance, the way I'm explaining it, I'm going to assume that a street guy is going to get it. So if it's a lightweight car like the Fox body you're talking about, probably if I go wide open throttle, we'll just say it's a five speed car. First gear. If I turn the nitrous on early at 2,000 RPM, uh, chances are it's going to just knock the tires loose and uh, you won't grab traction. So the idea there is, is we can really get after it on the throttle. And once we get to 4,000 RPM, we've got some wheel speed. Now we can turn the nitrous on without blistering the tires off. So that's kind of the, the idea with that. You sound like a guy who's been there before. <laughs> have, you, have you ever actually done that in real life? Absolutely, a few times, and and you know, so actually, I, I did the same thing in a Fox body. Had it on the uh, either the radio button or the horn button, whatever it is, on the the right hand side of the steering wheel. And uh, young and dumb back then, part throttle through town, hit the button a few times. Um, typically, you're not going to want to run the nitrous unless you're wide open throttle. Um, so that's kind of what if we stay away from the button and put it under control of the Holly, it's going to be a lot safer for that end user. One of the things too with the Holly, um, not only can we turn it on from a certain RPM and turn it off at a certain RPM, but we can also do progressive control. So we can say we have this 400 shot we're putting on this. We may uh, pulse it to where it's 50% duty cycle, which means we're gonna cut that in half. And then we can ramp it however we want. So we start at 200 and ramp it into 400. So not only are we turning it on for, you know, maybe from 4,000 to 6,000 or 6,500, but in that RPM range, we're going to ramp more nitrous in, if that makes any sense. So for the, 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 the winner of this engine, who's going to put it into a car, what are they going to feel when they, when they roll into it? If you do, if they do what you're suggesting, and clearly you're the engine guy, I would do what you're suggesting when they take off. How is that going to feel as opposed to just a, a standard a standard engine without the nitrous on it? Like a kick in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you actually kind of hinted at what, I guess, the same thing my, my, my brother did too. You know, again, back in the day, we were young, we were dumb, we were doing foolish stuff. The technology that you have now with things like these, these fuel injection and, and the control systems now have got to give you more opportunities to, can you, I assume you can put more power down now because of the way that, that it doesn't just all come in at a hundred percent, right? How, what's it like now to have the technology as opposed to the old day where it was literally a bottle and a switch? Keeping stuff alive a lot longer and managing the power. So um, there's some built-in fail safes too. Uh, so you can save that motor. For instance, 
If it goes too lean, it'll shut the system off. If it goes too rich, it'll shut the system off. Now, if you're a serious racer, it's $50,000 on the line, you can simply hit a button to override that. So maybe the system went lean, it shut off to save the motor, but I wanna win the 50,000, I'm gonna override it and, and I'm going for it. So, you know, there's, there's lots of things that the technology today that you can do to one, keep the motor alive, be able to harness the power or we call it power management so you can actually get it to the paint. So, Doug, there's obviously a lot more to the engine than just this nitrous system. we got to talk about the guts, uh, the, the internal stuff, the actual block and, and whatnot. Can you show us around uh, the piece you've got in front of you there? Absolutely. So, we started with the World Products block as our foundation. Um, one of the nice features about their block uh, is the fact that it has six bolt per cylinder option. Now, we're not getting to the level where this particular package is gonna need it. The cylinder head we're using is just a four bolt per cylinder. Um, but this is a really nice block if we have a cylinder head uh, that will allow for a six bolt. This way we can clamp that head down better, and make even more power. Um, lots of different features and benefits in this block. There's, uh, there's plenty of aftermarket blocks available today, but. Um, there's certain things in the Ford land where you only have one provision for oil pressure, for instance. So we, we might need, you know, provision for the gauge. If we're doing a turbo engine, we might need uh, oil feed to the turbos. So one of the things with the world block is they offer a ton of different uh, areas where we can take oil pressure from. Um, so that, that's kind of a nice deal. And if we look a little deeper on the bottom of the block, of course, definitely every aftermarket block, you're gonna be looking at a four bolt main steel cap, splayed bolt. Uh, so the splayed main basically is taking a, your, your four bolt and the, the outer bolts are angled and they're going into more meat in the block. Um, you'll notice too, the cylinder walls in this or the cylinder barrels are actually a lot deeper in this block. So what that really does is if we have a longer stroke, such as doing a three, three, 400 or even three, 500 stroke, um, uh, well, this is a 427, so a four inch or even a four, 250. Basically, we have a longer cylinder barrel that's going to uh, control that piston better from rocking when it gets to the bottom of the bore. So, um, you know, that's kind of a nice feature within their block. Again, the billet cap deal. So lots of stuff in this, this is kind of, Definitely the foundation you need to start with. You know, there's lots of guys that, that talk about, yes, you can spray a stock block. You just kind of, you know, you, you're, you've got a ticking time bomb. We just, that's how we put it. <laughs> so you always want to start with a good foundation. Well, it does make sense. I mean, it, whether you're building a house, you're building a car, you're building a whatever, right? It's, it's the, the basics. And it's, and I don't know how much more money is that from a, a you know, from a, a building standpoint, from just using a, a stock block, but it's one of those situations where when you're there, do it right the first time, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and there's always going to be exceptions to that rule. You know, if you have a class racer that has to use a factory block, then you may do, uh, if they allow in the rules, a splayed steel cap and convert it to a four bolt. You may put a main girdle on it. You may half fill the block. You know, those are, there's reasons to do that if we're a class racer, but uh, just like you use a house as an example, we're not going to risk building it on a really weak foundation because everything else elegant we put inside of that home, when it comes crashing down, it's all junk. So, you know, that's kind of what we look at is the block being the foundation. If we were talking about a stock block, we can put a very good crank in it, very good rod, very good piston. But if the block fails, then you're going to basically render all the rest of the parts useless at that point. You know, it, it could ruin the rods, could bend the crankshaft. There's a lot of things that could go on there. So if we're going to invest a lot of money in the rotating assembly, let's also invest in a very, very strong foundation in the block area. But well, you were using that house analogy and you, you're, you're talking about having a great foundation of the house so that you have your nice elegant things inside. Elegant is not necessarily an adjective that a lot of folks use for the guts inside of an engine, but you're going to put, um, for lack of a better term, elegant things inside of this one, right? What, what, like, point out some of the things you got. So we've had uh, Eagle jump on board with their crankshaft. So this is a 4340 crank. 
So another area uh, to pay attention to, guys want to know, can I put a nitrous on a motor? So if we're starting with a base engine that makes decent base power, I mean, it might be a 500 horsepower engine that we're putting a 150 shot on. 150 doesn't seem like a whole lot, but we can't do that on a cast steel crankshaft. So we always want to start with a really good crankshaft, 4340 crank. Uh, in this case, we're running an H beam rod. So this is kind of what I would call our stage one nitrous motor. So the next step for this engine, obviously it's going to start to get assembled. What, uh, we'll have to come back and, and check up on you, obviously, but what are you going to do as you move forward with this motor? So what we can do is once we've had the short block assembled, so at this point, you know, they're doing all the bearing clearances, measuring the, uh, the bore against the crank uh, and, and doing your piston to wall clearances. So once this thing's short block, then we'll kind of go into the, the top end of the package, the cylinder heads that we're using and the partners that jumped on board for that, what we do in the cylinder head with uh, the valves uh, specifically, uh, also the head gasket and the fasteners that help clamp all this down and keep all that cylinder pressure inside the motor. And uh, then we'll look at the uh, actual intake manifold and the nitrous system itself. Um, I think to follow that, then we'll roll into the dyno and show you a little bit about the uh, programming that we're talking about. Well, there is a lot more to come as the guys over at Prestige Motorsports get this engine put together. And uh, Doug Aitken's the president there, and obviously he's going to walk us through all the steps. If you've ever wondered what it's like to actually build a proper nitrous-ready engine, this is where you want to come check in. And then, of course, Doug, when you're all done with it, you're going to give this thing away. How can folks uh, get signed up, eventually get signed up to, uh, to win this engine? So it'll be basically just like the last ones. You're going to go to holly.com. Uh, in the past, it was forward slash win. Um, generally, you'll see it on their, their main page. So I encourage anybody and everybody, even if you're not a Ford guy, um, I think anything that's free, uh, people can get excited about. So I'll tell you what, in this day and age, you could engine swap just about anything into anything. And I don't care who you are, you're going to want to win this thing and then put it into whatever, wherever your mind goes, I suppose, right? That's right. You don't have a car, you'll find one if you got a good motor to put in it. <laughs> it is Doug Aitken. He's the president over at Prestige Motorsports. They're building this awesome Ford 427 cubic inch nitrous engine. They expect to make a thousand horsepower with it. And you're going to get a chance to win this thing. And of course, we're going to follow along through the entire build right here on Engine Room TV. Doug, thanks so much. And we look forward to seeing everybody else next time right here on Engine Room TV. You bet. Thank you.